I'm about to glue this bridge I made on an old flat top Gibson guitar from the 1940s. And I want to use our bridge clamping call to do that with. But it's really made to fit a more modern bridge like a Martin bridge and there are many copies, which has a very deep belly and a lot of curve and radius to the top. It makes good contact in all four contact points. But if I put the Gibson bridge in the same spot because it's thin and flat, the outside of the call makes contact, but we really need the center to press down also for the glue to get any kind of a good hold onto the wood. I've got a real easy modification that you can make to make this clamp work for both bridges. My modification is pretty easy. I took a wood doll, a half inch wood doll, and cut little sections off the end so it fits inside the holes that come in the cork pads with the clamp. These dolls are cut a little bit taller than the cork so they meet the bridge top first and fill that space that we saw between the call and the bridge. These two have the same half inch doll cut to the thickness of the cork and glued to a scrap of wood. Then I shape that with a curve so that it sits right down into the bridge wings. I now have four really good contact points to clamp this bridge on. I went ahead and finished up my bridge and glued it on with hot high glue and gave it 24 hours to dry and this is my setup for this 1942 Gibson LG2, which is a pretty rare model, because it doesn't have a spruce top, it's all mahogany, and there's such a rich sound. So my clamp setup is what you see here. I've got an Ibex clamp in the center and two sound hole clamps on either side. They actually sit right in the area where I want that extra pressure. And with the sound hole clamps, I put the nylon calls on the lower jaw, and they're padded to protect the top or the bridge plate. Another thing you can notice is that I've drilled a hole in my clamp and I popped the nylon cap off that comes with an Ibex clamp so the two mate quickly so you're not fumbling when you go in with your hot glue and you don't have a lot of time. The block of wood I taped to the bottom of the jaw is to span that brace and come up against the bridge pad and give the upper screw something to bear against and this spreads the load. I got a good squeeze out all the way around the perimeter of the bridge so it's down nice and tight. I've got a little hot high glue that's dried on the outside. I can clean that up with real hot water on a little Q-tip. You might notice these four dots. Two of these are pearl inlays that the original bridge had. Underneath those were machine screws that held the bridge on. I don't think that's a good idea because often when the bridge wants to come off, then it can't because it's held tight. In this case, it fractured the top which was a big re-gluing job, but it needed a new bridge pad. I just put them back in for looks, no screws. And these two dots aren't pearl. Those are nylon locating pins that we use to locate a bridge quickly so it doesn't go like this when you're lining up your clamps. You cut them flush on the top and flush on the inside so they don't get in the way of the clamps, and you can still pop them out with your little finger and push up into that hole. Just pop them out later. Good catch. And I'll save these and use them on the next flat top Gibson bridge that I put on. So along with the great results that this produced, this little clamp modification doesn't cost anything. It's completely reversible. You just unplug your little calls and you're ready for a Martin bridge. And you end up with two, two tools in one. Mm -hmm.